Welcome everybody to the first video on Node.js Crash Course. In this series, we are going to build a, the backend of a website and we are going to touch the basics of almost everything, creating a server, routing, forms, validation, MongoDB databases to perform CRUD operations, flash messages, and more. But maybe you don't know what Node.js is. Well, Node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment using the B the B8 engine. To simplify it a bit is using JavaScript on the backend, that's the server side, instead of just on the client side. This is good because by just knowing JavaScript you can create the backend of or server side and the frontend or the client side of a website. If you are interested in more about what Node.js is and everything behind it, I'm going to leave this free code camp article that explains what Node.js is, why use it and more. But now, let's go to the installation. To install Node.js, just, well, go to the Node.js website, download it and click on the executable, this one, and you will have a setup wizard where you will select a few options to install Node.js and that's it. If you are using Linux or macOS, go to other downloads and select the operating system you are using, macOS, Linux, whatever. That's all we need. Download it, click on next on the setup wizard and you will have Node.js installed. Now let's create our first Node.js server. First, open your text editor and I'm going to use Visual Studio Code but you can use whatever you want, even the window notepad, but don't use it, please. First, we need to create a configuration file, and to do so, we need to type npm, by the way, npm, by the way, npm is the node package manager. This is going to manage every package you are going to install. For example, we want to use the node.js mongodb database, so, node uh, mongodb, and here you will find a lot of packages. But you only need to know that npm is node package manager. So, let's come here, let's create the configuration file, npm init. And it's going to ask us a few questions. Name of the package, ok, version, ok, description, I don't care entry point app.js this is going to be the entry point or base file app.js test command no git repository no 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 it's okay yes and here we have the package.json this is a file that is going to give us and other developers information for example the entry point which version we are using, the name of the package, and a few more things that we are going to see later on the course. Remember what I said about npm or node package manager? We are going to install our first package by npm install and the name of the package express. Let's wait a moment. Let's go to the package.json again. And we can see we have a new dependency we didn't have before, the express package we installed. And this package is installed here, on express. We have this new folder, and here we are going to have every package we, we have installed. And you can see we have a lot of folders here, not only express. This is because Express is going to use a lot of pre-existing packages and has installed Express and a lot of packages that Express is going to use. But again, you are not going to touch this. So, let's create our entry point, app.js or base file. Let's come here, new file, app.js. This is going to be the base of our project. Right now, remember we have installed Express. We are going to require 
express and we are going to save this on a variable a constant variable const express and now we are going to use this express and we are going to store it into an app variable in app we are going to find a lot of functions and methods we are going to use listen to start the server 3000 is going to be the port we are going to use and let's save this and we are going to start the server with node and the name of the file app.js okay we are not having any problem here let's go to the 3000 port and we are getting a cannot get error why is this? well not JS is working but we didn't create it any road we are not telling that if you come here what you need to, s to display to the user if you go to the admin road what you need to display it we have no roads so let's create them let's come here here we're going to create the roads and remember we created the app and app has the roads too app use the name of the road for example create memory because in this course we are going to create memories and memories is going to be an object that will have a photo with um, the name of the place the photo was taken the data and a description and more things but you need to know that this is the name of the road what are we going to display to the road? well we need to pass as a second argument and you can see it here rig or request what the user is requesting resp res or response what the server is going to answer to the user and next we're going to answer or respond something to the user for example we're going to send this we're going to send him some text like this create a new memory we are going to send this to the user and don't you worry because later on the course we are going to create HTML files and we are going to send those files we are not going to create a full website by writing like this this is only uh, an example so you understand what roads are and how you are going to create them let's save this and let's go to create memory and cannot get create memory why? because we need to stop the server and load it again let's refresh the website and now we have create a new memory this year let's create another one the home road app use and again we are going to pass uh, request response and next and again we are going to send and again we need to stop the server load it again and now we can go to home but this is a bit cumbersome every time we create a new file or change something we need to stop the server load it again and this is you are going to forget you need to stop it and it's going to create a lot of problems luckily for this we have nodeman package let's install it npm install nodeman and we are going to use this package only on development we don't need this on production so for this we are going to save it on dev let's jump on time and unlike express we have this on dev dependencies not on dependencies on dev dependencies what does it mean that some packets are on dependencies and other ones are on dev dependencies? Packets on dependencies are available on development and also on production. 
when your website is available to other people, but packages on dev dependencies are only available to the developer, what we are doing right now, creating the website. We have installed NodeMon right now, and we can come here to the scripts and create a new one. Start. And on start, we are going to load the app file, the one we created right now. And we are going to create it instead of node app.js with node mon app.js. And now we are going to come to the terminal and instead of running the server with node app.js, we are going to use npm and the name of the script, start. We have a new messages because we have installed nodemon. And remember that we have welcome home on the home road. Now we can change it, add more exclamation marks, save it. I'm going to press Ctrl and S to save it. And you can see that Notemon has restated the server. Let's refresh it. Now we don't need to stop the server, load it again. Notemon is going to make it for us. Now let's try it again. Let's create a new memory, exclamation mark, save it. Let's go to create memory. See? Nodemon is going to restart the server every time we do any change to the server. Now we have created the base of our application. Yes, it is small, but it's working. We can come here, go to the, this road and everything. And of course, we are going to grow from here. Speaking of growing, you can see that creating a new page or a new road, sorry, with rest sent could be problematic. Image if you have to build a full website using just text code like this on every road, on every page. And what about if your website has 10 pages or 13? Well, on the next tutorial, we are going to learn how to extract our, our roads in independent files instead of the main file, how to load HTML files instead of writing the code here, because this is horrible, and how to display a 404 message when the users go to the non existing link, like this one. I hope you are interested in learning these things and more, and I will see you on my next video.